Like, seems like no matter what happens, he winds up, you know, grinding his way forward with some straightforward heroes like DK. But does maybe really need to be one of those heroes that does some big flashy moves? I think so. That's just kind of his playstyle. You know, he's got that Sumail, that Miracle, that Ana kind of aspect to him. He's just a carry player who's playing out of the mid lane. Well, it sounds like the draft has begun, and this could be the final match of the night. Doesn't mean that the show is over, though. We will be having a special performance at the end of the evening, which you won't want to miss. But for now, let's head into game two between Team Liquid and LGD. Interesting, interesting. Team Liquid, or I'm sorry, LGD favoring second pick over first pick, giving Team Liquid first pick and Earthshaker once again. That means that they don't want the Shaker for themselves, so then they'd rather be in that position because they know what's coming. It's going to be a first pick Shaker. Yeah, I like the variation with the Batrider. This hero is a lot more neutral. He, you know, he's a little bit more. He has more options than a Magnus. I think he's a little bit more versatile, I guess is the best word for that. They definitely got some confidence in it. I mean, they, I mean, they beat us twice with the Batrider. I can't recall if they played against IG. I don't think so. But they definitely got a lot of confidence in the Batrider. It was very dominating, like previous years that they played uh, in the loser bracket. Yep. Magnus still unbanned, but they've decided to get away from it. And, and the Lich ban, definitely. Like, yeah. I, I felt like the Lich hurt them a lot last game. They don't want that to happen again, and having the Batrider, now it's a hero that offers more laning possibilities, so... Yeah, and Yao could... I, I could see a game where Yao would actually take the Batrider. You know, he used to be an offlane player himself, very, very comfortable on that Batrider hero. And they could still, you know, go back to that Magnus, um, you know, with their fourth pick and then fifth pick their, their melee hero. I'm very surprised by the Venom pick. It's a very early Venom pick, and... It's a very good laner, obviously, and you probably don't want to go in the Necrophos route against the Batrider because now you have one lane where the Necrophos cannot go. Um, so Liquid, they always have this approach with Shaker where they, they're giving Matthew something where he's not going to get in trouble. There's not going to be pressure on his lane. If anything, he's going to apply pressure and it gives them complete freedom to decide which lane they want to focus on. Veno is a decent route. I'm not sure how good it is against Bat specifically. Necro is awful against Bat, that I know. So that's definitely their second go-to hero. I'm we'll curious see what you're... they can punish it. Yeah, I'm curious about your thoughts on this relatively early anti-mage ban. Very common pick versus Venom, it's a, one of the most common, I would say. Very uh, bad core matchups for Venom. Yeah, Venom is helpless against anti-mage. You feel really bad playing that Venom against AM, that's for sure. Also, just not a hero that LGD is afraid to go to. You know, it's just, it's worked well for them, these hard, hard carries. This opener is pretty good from LGD because you don't know if it's a better support or it's what we just like tackled earlier. Now they, it's, it's harder for Liquid to just understand what LG is going for and punish it straight up. Yeah. Um, I, I like that from LG. It's a better approach to the draft. They still going to have to find a way for them to secure themselves the, the, the position, their comfortable, like their comfort zone, which is like having a better, better late timing, not being pressured to just like be too aggressive and do moves that they don't want to do. What's, uh, Sebastian, what's a hero that you thought we'd see more of in this tournament that you haven't seen? Mm, I thought we'd see more of Beastmaster. Um, it's a hero that I think has a lot of potential right now. I mean, we, we saw some. And we didn't see it at all in the group stages, and then we saw a couple here and there, LFY, Liquid, picking it up. Um, yeah, it's definitely a very strong hero dispatch, and a hero that I think is extremely strong is Brewmaster, but it hasn't been played. I don't think a lot of teams are comfortable playing that hero. It might appear at some point. I know Liquid, it is a hero that Liquid is willing to run. Uh, if it gets there. Oracle. Mm. So now they reveal a bit more. This is all 11 Batrider, obviously, Oracle position 5. It's easier for Liquid to read what LG wants to do. And it's the weakness of second pick right there. It's like, you need seconds. to pick a hero. Are you going to pick your carry? It's pretty risky, right? It's just going to yeah. get countered. Are you going to pick your mid? It's very risky. Most people go support. Gives them one more pick to see. And this is when, usually, EG here, they would pick a support that could also be something else, so they, they sure. keep pushing it to that stage. But LGD, obviously, their hero pool is uh, a bit narrower, so they don't have a choice. They go for the Oracle, and now it all reveals itself. Oracle's, Oracle's pretty fine, though. It's, it's, you know, you can block out all that magic damage from Venomancer and save your teammates. It is a hero that can be abused uh, by certain mind control heroes, I would say. I'm looking at uh, Prophet. 
Very good heroes against these supports that can mess with SG safely a lot. I think Liquid, they, they also run Venom safe lane, uh, I mean off lane, if it comes down to that. But uh, they were probably looking at what my control would be playing right now. LGD's I think Varian's a pretty good tech. That's Huskar. a very, very early Huskar pick. This is quite surprising, especially... It, it means that they already know what they want to get with it. Most likely Dazzle, I would say. It's not a hero that LGD can pick, and Oracle's out. These are the two most common Oscar combos. Okay, so this is hmm. so this is definitely Dazzle pick coming, right? And they picked Huskar I would assume first because they would worry about LGD stealing it from them. Yeah, that's a pretty good guess, I would say. Uh, I mean, Veno, Shaker, two heroes that are pretty helpless against Huskar. Same goes for Batchatter, Punka. Death Prophet. That that's a very non combo. Also, the Oracle DP, very dirty combo, if you ask me. And there goes the Dazzle. So yeah, it is definitely them, like these mind games going on. It is a great, for, for me, if you ask me, it's a very good Oscar Dazzle game so far. Extremely good. Yep, Conco pretty much all magic damage, same with Batrider. Death Prophet's going to be picking up a little bit of physical damage, but not, you know, not the best core up against Huskar. I know for a fact that the Chinese teams, they seem to value Veno against Death Prophet for certain reasons. It is a hero that punishes what Death Prophet wants to do in the yep. game, playing around movement speed a lot, so... Although, it is a pretty good Death Prophet Oracle game. Uh, I just... I would just favor Liquid a bit in this draft so far. I think they did it pretty smartly. Ben, what's your... what's some of your favorite carries to play up against Huskar? CK is number one. I think CK is by far the best one. He struggles a lot versus AoE, and a lot of... Uh, or, he struggles a lot with dealing AoE damage, and with he has a lot of physical... Yeah. It's uh, a really good CK game. Really outside good. from that, because I expect it to be banned... Uh, that's tough. I think PA is like pretty decent, but not so good versus the Earthshaker and Veno. Yeah, they've got they've got the last pick, so they'll be able to hopefully make a really smart decision. I think it's a pretty good PL game also so far. Um, yeah, just kind of dealing with that Shaker. Yeah, Shaker is a bit annoying, but you have ways to deal with it. You just need someone to mess with the Shaker in the fight, and it's a pretty free PL game. Like PL versus Oscar Dazzle Veno is like is the dream PL. And what about LGD? We've seen a lot of extremely powerful dead last picks that completely reshape the game. Do they have any options like that available? They have to deal with the Huskar. They don't have enough physical damage right now. Huskar has, just has way too much survivability versus their first three picks, even a decent amount versus Death Prophet. So you really just want a very heavy physical damage core. If not CK, then maybe PA or Troll, which Ame really, really likes. I could potentially see them going for Terror Blade too. I think, I don't really think as a Husker you really want to jump in, even if you do have a Dazzle on your team. That's another option that I would consider. I do like Terrorblade actually a lot. Husker has got no way to deal with those illusions. You'd have to worry a little bit about Earthshaker blinking in, but Oracle could always have your back in those questionable situations. Omni Knight, the final ban for LGD. They're assuming that it's a Venno safe lane, which is a pretty good assumption. They can still run it off lane and pick uh, something different. And it was not a Venno safe lane, so uh, there it is. It's a brood, Matumba Man brood, and it's going to be most likely a mind control Venno. So now LGD is probably, you know, they have a couple se seconds to like think about it again. Uh, they, they, they assume wrong. So now there's a lot of pressure for them to just decide which hero is the right one, because now they have to think about the Venno off lane and a brood, which is a very annoying last pick. And Ben, you've talked about this before. Team Liquid doing the not Dota Dota draft. Yeah, I guess you kind of want to pair the Bat Rider versus the Brood Mother. That's going to be tough for them. You have 10 seconds left. I think the last pick that you want to deal with Huskar and Brood Mother. Yeah, not too many options left. Two 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 Pretty bold pick. You, Pretty good. They're lacking some, some carry. I mean, both both teams don't have great late game. This is one of the most unusual dra drafts that we've seen that like their scaling is yeah. not that great on both sides. A but lot of magic damage on LGD. So we saw, I think, actually, Nails two birds with one stone. It does very well for Huskar and Brood Mother. I didn't think of that many picks that could deal with both. Yeah, I think, you know, looking at it now, I think there's definitely some possibilities that it can work out, but it is a little bit out there, um, yeah. but it'll definitely be interesting to watch. Some unusual drafting coming out from these two teams, and currently LGD's tournament life is on the line as they are down 0-1. Will Team Liquid be able to close the day out and advance to the grand final day tomorrow, or will LGD tie things up? Lumi, we have seen many a team in a big match fall prey to this Dazzle Huskar. And then, because it just wasn't quite enough cheese, they say, we want extra cheese. They go last pick brood. Something that Liquid has done very successfully previously on this tournament, and 
to the point where it was usually getting banned in the second stage. This is the first time. time in the main event they got to go, go for the Brood. I think every team has second phase banned the Brood. Just respecting what Team Liquid could do about it. And once we get into the game, I'll talk about what you could do. But I want to talk about LGD a bit. You know, coming in into this tournament, a lot of the memes on the Chinese network is saying, like, they are the people's champ. They are supposed to team that this year is going to win it all. And now they're one game away from being eliminated. So there's a lot riding on this. Also for Team Liquid, one of the storyline coming in here is that he's been to every single TI. Team Liquid has done well, always at finishing second place, third place. This is the big win they're searching for. God, yeah. they are going to have everyone yeah. in this crowd behind them if they could take this game. I or hear at least USA chance. The vast majority. We've got yeah. the USA chance for, of course, a very American roster. I mean, Liquid built a lot of fans from that fan base back in the day. But, sure. Oh, I think it's a bit of a stretch. But hey, we'll give it to you guys. Let's see. Can Liquid take game two? Or will LGD force that very, very nervous deciding game number three? We find out now as the teams enter the fields of Dota. So the Matumba Man mid lane Brewmother, if you haven't seen it, you might think this is a pushing hero, at least traditionally that's how it's played, but Matumba Man plays at a very economy base. You'll see him litter wards all across this mid lane, you see four ancient camps next to the mid lane, he will farm all of them. He will walk into his own jungle with the kind of the lines of webs he'll build across the map and just farm camps after camps after camps. The lane 1v1 matchup versus Timbersaw might not be the best. Like, he can't really harass and kill the Timbersaw because of reactive armor. But there's nothing the Timber can do about stopping Brewmother just farming all of their map. I think this, like, it doesn't look like it's a late game draft, but I think this Brewmother has some very, very strong late game power. Let's see if she can get there. Is Liquid are going to be running that off lane Mind Control Venomancer. LGD setting up with. At least initially, the defensive tri lane. We'll see Mind Control getting snared a bit here, but should be okay. Just want to control these bounty runes early for LGD. And of course, uh, it is going to be a safe lane Huskar. So, you know, oftentimes with the Huskar, you really do look to can anyone pressure him in the lane? Is there any way to slow down that armlet timing? But a solo Batrider Lumi, no, that is not going to slow him down. In fact, I, I, I wonder how O11 is going to lane it himself. I think he might need to stack for himself and perhaps jungle a little bit because. It's kind of pick your poison, right? Like the Timber Saw, you know, obviously can lane well against the Broodmother, but they don't really have anyone left to do with the Huskar in lane. Anyway. Yep. Also, this is a very you know, awkward laning uh, pairing for LG on the bottom side of the map. You got a Death Prophet, very strong laner, but definitely needs a ton of levels to kind of propel ahead with the Spare Siphon as well as the Crypt Swarm. So. It looks weird. Like, Death Prophet always goes mid. I, I can't even recall the last time I've seen her not in the mid lane, but. I don't know that there's a better setup for LGD. Yeah, they, you know... Like what are you going to do, send the Death Prophet off lane? That sounds hard. They got double cheese, so you, you're going to have to do something back. You, know, you even have teams like OG, they put their, their safe lane player mid to play uh, Death Prophet, because Ana in that team is like, not really comfortable. Well, they are setting up here in the bottom lane, looking for mind control early. Fissure coming through, but the Spirit oh. Siphon's still going. Is it enough for maybe just one auto attack short? It looked like still mind control slinks away. Yeah, I was not in position for a uh, good fortune then to extend the chain stuff. This mid lane is going very well for Ame early on anyway, as he's off to the 8CS mark. Obviously, there's going to be some spider lane last hits here as the game moves along, so the creep score could be a little deceiving, but yeah. for now it is going well. Top lane, 0 11 struggling as expected. One of the best way to zone out the Batrider in support is the Dazzle. It's poison touch and give him the right click. If the Batrider turns on you, your, your, your Huskar is going to come up and, and help you out, so... I'm not sure exactly what O11 is going to do here. For now, it's just suffer quietly and, and hug the tower. That is the call from him. Get the early levels. We're going to see Matumba Man ramping up the Spiderling army. He's yep. be using them for some last hits. The one good thing that Ami is getting out of this lane is that a lot of time... For example, in this case, like the Broodmother Spiling could just right click uh, the enemy mid hero. But of course, he's got the reactive armor, so he's not going to even care about that. As we have uh, a little bit of D War Ward. Does it not clip the sentry on the mid lane? Yes. I guess not. The tricks of the, the angle, perhaps. Liquid, meanwhile, rotating the Earth Shaker around. He's going to lumber towards top here. This could well be the first blood. Eleven does have the Firefly. He tries to back away. Fissure, Ooh. Fissure, holding it. Eleven will back off. Obviously Good effort the... by GH, but this time unable to find the kill. Yeah. In fact, could be in a tiny bit of danger here. Eleven wants Firefly's ending soon, so... 
Not going to pursue, but does secure the bounty room. After the step. Brewmother cutting in from the, the mid lane to the camps on the side, already farmed the centaur camp. And it's so easy for, like, if Matumba Men expects a gank coming, he'll just do what he's doing now. It's just ultra safe. So he's just going to outfarm in mid eventually, and there's not much you can do about it. Really is the beauty of the new map configuration with the way the jungle camps have been moved around over the last year, year and a half or so, that there's just so many places Bird can send the spider lanes mid. You mentioned the four ancient camps. There's also some smaller and easier to kill ones early. Yeah. So it does give you a lot of options to stay relevant, even if you have a disadvantage matchup against a hero early. Oh, Levin's going to try to pour it out. Is there going to be Fissure? Oh, just yeah, a little bit late. to time it just right. Yeah. I think he was thinking that the Batrider was kind of juking up there. And then the Batrider just poured it out. Playing with fire. And they do set my control here off to the jungle, at least for now. Yep. So, not going to try to lane bottom. They are giving that freely to DP. But it's still a bit behind in the CS department all the same. That one less creep. Bounty! So... Looking forward, Lumi, obviously Liquid are a fantastic Roche lineup. They have Huskar, they have the Veno, and they have Brood. And the new Brood build for Matumba Man is just rushing this Desolator straight off. Yep. See, Ame pressuring GH here. He's going to chain forward. Does he commit for this? Does he try? The Fissure comes through. GH knows there's a bit of danger. It's a level three reactive armor. This game, it really comes down to how well LGD could deal with pressure. It is so important to keep your mid-tier one alive, because if you do lose that mid-tier one, one, one thing that we always talk about is losing map control. But if you lose map control against this Broodmother, then he starts to farm your jungle. And, and then Huskar's taking Roshan, Venno's... And taking there. tier 1s and tier 2s. And we saw LGD when they got O2 by Virtus Pro. One thing that Virtus Pro did very well was apply pressure everywhere on the map. Such that you can't, you have to keep reacting, for, you know, via TP scrolls and whatnot, and just, just pull you apart. And I think with this draft, that's exactly what Team Liquid is going for as well. Ame um, could be the glue that holds them together, as he is having a great start here, still mid. Oracle trying to get those levels with maybe bottom. So mind control back to the lane now. You see that dance between woods and lane, trying to consistently keep the farm up, stay safe. GH continues his roaming now back to the bottom and. See Matumbo Man, as you mentioned before, just every chance he gets, he'll take a pit stop in the woods, keep the farm up, yep. keep the economy as strong as possible for Liquid. All the while, the first timing they're looking for here is the armlet, and Miracle, getting close to it now, just needs the two last small components, but while he's waiting for that, LGD are wrapping around, they're actually pressuring the Liquid Tower pretty rapidly, so trying to convert this good start as GH will show himself in the lane here, could be in danger. Fissure coming through, Broodmother joining the frame momentarily with oh, the spider lane army. This. But LGD come from behind, can they lock him down? They try to burst him, chaining over the top, Ame scores the first blood! Does Liquid get any revenge? They're gonna send the spider lane army after them, these things can pack a punch, Victoria. Delta split time, getting look for TP down. out. And is gonna be allowed to walk away for now. I mean, these three heroes don't have a stun, right? One thing Liquid are lacking, yeah, it's just about to mention, they yeah. have just the Earthshaker. Oh no. Very light on stuff. Yao jukes to the right. He's gonna get found out. It's time to buy some space. Boots. Buy items if you need to. Boots! <laughs> My boots! Oh, no boots for him. My kingdom for a shoe. Buy TP scroll, buy wards. All right, he lost like 50 gold. I don't think he lost any, actually. I'm not sure. Well, he lost an he lost early boots timing, that's yeah. for sure. They lose the boots, yeah. But, but, but look at the yeah. late Timmersaw is just, just hitting the tower. He's actually about to take it. The glyph comes out. This is unusual to see a Brood getting pushed out this early. Can Ame get the last hit? The Fissure comes through. GH looking for the Deny. Oh, he gets it. Though, it's just GH. Quick double club. Denies that tower, but it's still the tower down. So the only, Ame's favor. The only time that uh, Matumba Man struggle on the mid Brood was versus, I believe, a Bristleback. A Bristleback very similar to what uh, Timbersaw is here. Like, he, he just doesn't really care about the spider harass. And if you leave them in the lane, the He'll just harass, keep, he, he kills them. Yeah, he keeps kind of pressuring your, 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 your spiders and then pressure your tower. And that's why we saw Team Liquid last banning that Bristleback in this draft. But the, the Timbersaw last pick was very, very smart. Because if you put DP against this, DP is already dead two times and you have lost your tower by now. So. We'll see how it works out later in the game, but considering they only had about 30 seconds to figure out something that counters two cheesy heroes... Pretty impressive. It's awesome. impressive that they're even having a shot at this yeah. point. In fact, they are Your in the lead. Dire Scan just missing. Victoria this ward is right out of range. And he's about to see Kuro. Everything going right? I don't know if you want to tire uh, dive next to a Huskar. <laughs> that is dangerous. 
they seem content to kind of leave these 1v1s, Lumi. They're, yeah. they're doing fine in them for now. The Death Prophet actually... Ooh, rotation coming up, but this ward is going to spout out the TP. It'll scout out the smoke. Could be big. They are bringing four to the lane. Including the Death Prophet with Exorcism ready. Liquid are just abandoning their tower. And they're losing out so much. Look at uh, Mind Control. He, he noticed that the TP is out, so he immediately rushes forward and starts slamming down wards. Oh, He's going to just fight, pressure though. this tower. LGD want to take this engagement. Miracle jumping in first. The Fissure coming through. Trying to interrupt the Oracle. Exorcism committed, but they down already. They will lose him. And the oh, ultimate the of the Death kill. Prophet. Now the chase forward. Enchantone connects. They're looking for extra kills. Liquid bait the trap. They get two. They want a third. Looks like 11 will be able to retreat. Miracle roasting a bit. Not only do they get that two. That was the armlet debut. They also put Exorcism on a cooldown. Whenever you use Exorcism, you better win a big team fight or you get a building out of it. They get neither. Ame forced a TP bottom because Mind Control was pressuring it, which allows mid lane to be free again. LGD starting to get stretched apart a little bit here. They still have kept that mid tier one alive, which is the critical building, but. Even though it's only score one to three, there's a lot of pressure that LGD is facing right now. They just know one key mistake, not, not just that fight top, but maybe one more, and all of a sudden Liquid are threatening that tower mid. They're going to fish here, though, with the torrent on the mid lane. They find GH, and now maybe moves forward, trying to TP yeah. away the X, X, reeling him back in. LGD, they've got the abilities they need. The club, not enough. Down he goes. So a nice kill for LGD. They keep things close here. They still hold these towers for now. They did rotate the Timber Saw to bottom. And he's just gonna hold serve as he he becomes the siege engine, Lumi. He just goes from lane to lane, <laughs> yeah. hitting towers. How do Liquid deal with that, man? He's already picked up a hood. He'll get to do this until the Huskar start laying Fire Spear into him. Speaking of that, Huskar diving onto 11, roasting the bat. Normally, Fire is his friend. Don't touch the stove while it's hot. Down he goes. Yao also dropping in the meanwhile, so two kills for Liquid as they strike back rapidly. Ame under the tower, but perhaps baiting for Liquid to commit onto him. There is a Kunka just waiting. Ano for another thing to note is this Deso timing is very fast because it's yep. a naked Deso. So he's got it. Ten minutes in, Deso. Even as tanky as the Timber Saw is, especially if you catch him away from a creep wave while the reactive armor stacks are down, he becomes a lot more killable with this. Yep. Also opens up things like Roshan sneaks. Very possible when you're applying so much pressure all over the map. And the standard build from Matumba is straight into an Echo Saber. Then normally we'll see some sort of boots upgrade or potentially BKB if he just wants to go to take team fights. Uh, he, he also likes Mask of Madness quite a bit. He is going to be rushing towards it after the Desolator. All right. But the one of the most important hero I want to be mentioning is the Kunkka. Uh, we saw Victoria played it pretty beautifully uh, for the first half of the last game. But this game, he needs to have a very high level of X marks a spot to gank that Broodmother. Um, in the game where I, I mentioned earlier where the Broodmother struggled against that Bristleback, the other part of the component was having, again, a very high level Kunga in that game as well to punish a Tumba Man over and over again as, you know, you try to farm these jungle camps, you keep ganking. Oh, there's a dire scan revealing somebody lurks behind Ame. This tower going down. As well, Radiant Glyph being forced out in the meanwhile. The oh, look at the spider on the mid lane! In the mid lane oh, the extermination! Roasting all of those spiders. But Tumba Man even coming back into this. There's a lasso available. Committing the ult. Backup is coming. Remember we kept saying that O11 has the hardest lane? Look at his net worth. He is number one right now. I guess a little bit thanks to the fact that he just roasted about 25 spiders. He's yeah. got the blink as well. Yeah, 90 CS already for him. Great to a lot of spider lanes, but still up here near the top of the net worth charts. Obviously, this can cause problems for the Broodmother if she's out too far. Now with the Blink Lasso, once it is picked up, they might be able to find some pickoffs. And Eleven is looking for exactly that, but not the Brood. It is the Venno, another one of those nasty, vile creatures that Liquid have. And they're going to find Mind Control here coming in with the Chakram. Chaining forward, Torrent follow-up, big commitment. They'll get the kill. Liquid already, though, they're into the Roche Pit. Yeah, I mean, you got a kill, but it's a Venomancer, a third position Venomancer. It just shows you that LGD, they have this bad lasso, they want to use it. At the same time, the Huskar is such a tough gank. The Broodmother, you have no idea oh, where she is. Scan reveals it. It's not a fast enough Roche that it's out of the realm of possibility. LGD could try for a steal, but they're not really moving towards the pit. They'll finally TP in the Timber Song. He would love to jump in, but a bit too slow. Liquid do snag the Aegis. Still, they might even fight him. Miracle feeling awful ballsy. He's got vision, so he's not afraid. This ward is giving him all the all the vision he needs. 
If and he runs into the timber saw, he is going to lose that agent very quickly. Oh, or you run into a hero and you just kill him because you got the dazzle backup. The torrent will hit. Spirit Maybe he's still alive Spirit right now. Siphon keeping him alive. He gets the bonus armor. They're not able to kill him off. Now Kuro's out of position. He goes down. Miracle diving deeper and deeper. Really wants this kill. He dunks in again. A double dunk special nets in the kill. Still though, they did lose their dazzle. On the high ground, they've got the vision pumping the spears into that bat rider. Where's Timber Saw? Ame is here, but he's relatively low in the mana department. It doesn't want to dive on the Miracle. All the meanwhile, this is creating so much space. Matumba Man takes a mid-tier one finally, and now he's going to start putting webs all over your jungle, and it's going to be really tough. First, a web next to the Ancients. He'll farm that. Filthy. And now the pressure happening on the bottom side as well. We've seen a lot of ratting from Team Liquid, but this is just yet another way of... Well, not exactly ratting, but just putting pressure everywhere on the map that... How do you respond? Where do you respond? And you have to respond quickly. The second that that gank is revealed bottom, it's instantly, they're already into the pit. Oh. And now they're looking for more. Miracle, he'll be the tempo setter here. Looking for dive opportunities. These deep wards could be problematic. And maybe they're about to find again. Very killable. Jump forward. Miracle, give him another. And again, they ping out immediately that there is a ward on that high ground, but lose a the kill, they Ward will lose the bottom tier 1 to Team Liquid as well. Good luck de-warding though, that's that's the issue, right? It's so early, like you're not really gonna be able to buy a gem on anyone. Yeah. And Liquid are setting up shop in your woods. They're just afraid to walk uphill, they ping out oh, 11. gonna try for it, he oh, might just go down. Okay. He blinks away! <sighs> it's a no fly zone! I think that Napalm might have got like a vision of one hero and it's like, oh god. Let's go. Uh, Miracle's, <laughs> Miracles just waiting to bounce. Yeah. It's just camping them. Keeping them deep within their spawn. The one hero who can freely move about the map, it feels, is that Timber Saw. But now he starts to slip behind a little bit in the net worth department, Lumi. I wouldn't say he's slipping behind, but more so the Brute is surging ahead. Like, Brute is fair, farming fair half the map by himself, which is... LGD forced to play tower defense now. They do have their Kunkka mid turn, desperately to get his ultimate. This Miracle lurks in the wings. You're gonna bang the bongos. That rider. Look for that jump opportunity. Miracle, he wants to dunk, but not really an Ame. That rider finally gets the ward killed. Much easier to posterize Victoria, and that's who he's gonna find. Oh. Hey, Kunga, Kunga. He blinks in, he wants to initiate, but oh, he, he gets, gets angle slapped. Interrupted, canceled by the totem, and now Ame joining the fight, but Miracle's happy to fight within. Shockworm's not enough, he's got to chain away. Liquid are on the hunt, and they get another kill. LGD, you mentioned pressure now. It's feeling very difficult to get out on the map. Liquid's master plan I think LG's coming together. Absolutely crumbling. Kunkka just walks into a part of the map where he doesn't have vision, so he dies. The Batrider jumps in, gets owned, and then the Timber Saw also goes in, but missing every one of his spells. I, I just feel like Team uh, LGD, they want to look for a fight, but they just are unable to get the right numbers at the right place and the right vision to back it up. One game away from a date on the final day. Liquid are close. Sure, they lost those tier ones early, but now they're up a lot. 7,000 gold advantage, map control edge, momentum in the series. Can they end the game? Will LGD be able to drag this out? Can they stall? Can they find pickoffs? Where are those openings for LGD? Shaker walks around, sees Ame. I don't know if you want to go for that kill. I do want to say that right now, LGD, they're itemizing very smartly against what they're seeing. Uh, you see the... Uh, hold that thought. Victoria's uh, gonna die at the exact same spot. Slam jam! Thank you, man! Miracle grabs another. Easy for him. Uh, LGD, this is a no-go zone. They cannot be going to that southern side of the map, Lumi. I mean, just look at, look at the vision that LGD has right now. They have one ward next to the mid, and have one ward on a essentially a useless part of the map right now for them. And every time their support just walks up the hill, they just die. Batrider finally adds a little bit more vision on the right side of the map, but as they're doing this, Team Liquid takes down yet another important map control building. This is the beauty of the Huskar. When he gets to this stage of the game, has the level 3 inner vitality, he can just become the Siege Engine. And unless somebody jumps in... Oh, 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 oh. Could have been a quick way to delete that Aegis. <laughs> or not. Meanwhile, bottom lane, Mind Control going for the TP out. Can 11 find something? Just short. Mind Control's gone. And the tower is down. Last hit to Matumba. Still liquid gaining steam. They are close. One outer tower remaining. You know the next Roche is on the agenda for liquid. 
3,500 gold up on Matumba Man. That slightly difficult matchup early, it really hasn't phased him whatsoever. Yeah. One thing that the panel pointed out is that neither of these teams have excellent late game heroes. You know, you're looking at Huskar on one side and, uh, you know, the, the Timber Salt on the other. But I think the way I'm going to look at it is that Team Liquid is reaching their late game much faster. They're able to take all over the map, they're able to take objectives. And they're getting way more go out of it. They're trying to make a move here. Mind control on the high ground, though. The torrent coming through. Boat to connect. Can they bring this Venno down quickly? Silence as well. Spirit type, but not enough. He gets pushed away. Back it up to safety on the high ground. Now LGD need to retreat. Dunking in. Miracle. Give him another. He wants more. One, maybe two. Timber can't bring him down yet. He is fighting in the shotgun. Rave. Rave comes through. Countering and perhaps is the false promise of maybe, but no. It's another for Liquid. The hits just keep on coming. LGD, four down. Fight selection, LD. I Walked swear, up the hill. How do you find a good fight? That's the tricky thing. Like, Liquid have, they have the vision advantage. They seem to have the raw damage output advantage. It's just so much easier for them to take fights, and LGD yeah. are desperate. They walk up a hill to fight next to the enemy shrine. Granted, there was no shrine, but you're lacking vision. And of course, so easy for Kuroki to sit in a very safe spot on the back line, weave up your whole team, apply Grave, the GH Blink Dagger. Wow. I mean, LD, you say, how do you find the fights? You gotta take your Batrider, you gotta smoke, and you gotta find that Dazzle. Kill him fast, and then just move on the rest. Of the Lasso, in the on middle the middle lane. lane. Maybe they've overextended a bit. Silence comes First through. Down. They look to squash the boat, but he is great. Stand strong. But Tumba Man forcing them back in away. Miracle joining the party. Armlet toggling, and now has that halberd completed. Everyone's relatively low. Can they actually make a chase here? Oh, uh, Liquid need to make sure they don't give up any kills. This could be an opportunity for LGD to get outside the base. Roche could be up in as little as one minute. It is a massive advantage they've accumulated, Lumi. 11,000 gold at only 20 minutes. But in some ways, it does feel just a tiny bit tenuous if they overextend these heroes. Do have to dive. That's the, the nature of a Broodmother, it's the nature of a Husker. You have to go in deep and commit to find kills. That's perhaps where LGD can try and turn it. But Liquid are now slowing it down, playing it safe. They recognize there's still a tier two top. We'll take that down. I mean, if you want to play it really safe as Team Liquid, you could just stand in front of the building and hit it like what they're doing right now. And that also applies to the high ground. This is how we always see game ends with Huskar. He just slowly Hit your buildings. You can't really go on him because he's either got a Dazzle or an Oracle. I, I just look at LGD and my big question is like, can Timbersaw carry? Because right now, this Death Prophet doesn't feel like a core. She's got 5,800 net worth. She gets dunked every fight. Basically, they blow the False Promise and when that ends, she's dead. So it feels like it's all in Timbersaw. But it, as the panel brought up, like Timbersaw is your hard carry. That's a little scary. Yeah, I mean, he's had a couple of good looks, but just missing chains. Missing his combos a little bit. Granted, it is hard to play Timber when you don't have the vision or you have to worry about the explosive damage that's coming out from things like Shaker as well as, uh, you know, just right clicks from Huskar. And your way back in the game is going to be this Batrider finding openings, but Eleven might actually get punished here. Mind Control ushering him away with a Poison Nova. Back to the well with you, sir. And the thing is, like, those Fan Awards, the Spider Lanes are just scouting every movement the Batrider tries to make. And we're getting to the point in the game where I mentioned earlier where Matumba Man is going to start kind of constrict where you could farm. You know, you don't have a jungle anymore. And Liquid, even if they're not, you know, comfortable pushing up the high ground now, they could just wait. They have the map control, they can wait for the next ages, they can wait for just keep on farming. You could wait to Matumba to get six lives if you want, because the way I'm seeing this game going, LGD is unable to get out of the map, they're unable to get farm, and a lot of the farm right now is going into items that help them survive and not help them kill Broodmother or Huskar. See mind control just constantly laying down the wards and Eleven trying to match him, but he might get caught out here. Look for the jump, Miracle. He's close. Okay. He's close. He's in there, baby. Onto Eleven. And Eleven is down. Another death for him. LGD. They keep on trying to leave the Watch base. They keep this. on trying to fight. But Ame looking for the commitment here, trying to bring Miracle down. Miracle keeps on going in deeper, keeps on committing further. He even fights directly into this ultimate of the Death Prophet. False Promise dropped early, but there's the grave. Look for the counterplay. They're fighting right on top of the enemy shrine, and they just don't care. Perhaps they should. They've lost Miracle. Now the Echo. GH finding the counter. Three have fallen. Still the Exorcism going. The Midrax is down. Maybe it doesn't fall. matter. The Rat continues. It's a triple. Look at mid! Look at, mid. Look at bottom! Space. He hasn't actually taken the 
The no, he has. Blade, it's but gone. the mid lane is completely eviscerated. Mind Control's gonna fall. It's a trap for LGD. I was looking, why the hell is Team Liquid fighting at the shrine? The shrine wasn't even tapped. He, he could easily activate a shrine with Oracle. And then I look at mid. I was like, oh my god, it's a Broodmother taking over your whole base. Broodmother says nothing to it. Let me go farm some Ancients afterwards. What a disastrous turn of event. And of course, Team Liquid could just go back for the Roche. As is available now, what can LGD do? We thought it was hard to leave their base previously, but they might find another kill, locking the Venomancer down, flame break back in. With this kind of lead, it is a lot of gold to be giving up, but Lumi taking a lane this early when you already have the better map control lineup makes things very dicey for LGD. Yeah, we're gonna watch this fight one more time. And just look at the minimap, right? The Broodmother's doing his thing. And it almost doesn't even matter how this fight goes for Team Liquid. They will lose Miracle. But, you know, they, they win the war, right? So. Space great. Yeah, Miracle's just laughing. It's like, ah, God rocks. <laughs> you know, Liquid one step closer now. Still two lanes to go. And Roach will certainly aid them in that quest. As they commit, take this Aegis, grab the cheese. The Fusal Blade now picked up on Matumba Man. She's hitting the deck and one step closer to the game. Miracle urging his teammates on. Do they just go in again? This time, do we do it the good old-fashioned way? Headlong, or do we see more split push? They could also do it in a way where you put four on the Hold top. On. Kuro, I mean, a little bit of danger here. Big chain forward for Mame. He's going to commit for this, but Kuro is pretty tanky. Stays alive, diving in deeper, whipping on the chains, though. Now comes the boat. Kuro just pushed away to safety, jumping in again. Miracle starting to heat up. He's heating up. He's, oh, not quite able to finish the kill. Ame stays alive. Now 11 being forced oh back. That BKB lassoing him back in. Pulls the spider up under the cliff. But Matumba Man can get right back off of that as soon as this fire ends. Down he goes as well. They gotta kill that vision ward. He's so chilling up. Okay, he likes the view. Just waiting for Firefly. Yeah. All right. Now push back down. Go. Liquid. They see an opportunity here. There's no lasso right now. They There's still have no Aegis and They could just walk up the ramp. They're going the for the second lane. LGD. Tournament lives on the line. Can Liquid take this lane? Is there any sort of a defense being mustered? EP tries to walk from behind, but Broodmother catch her out. Look at the damage. He's got to pop the ghost. He's got the defusal blade. Surging forward. GH is there with the totem. Crushing one. Looking for more. Echo committed. He's got two. Four have fallen. LGD on the ropes now. And Liquid surging. They want this tower. GG. GG. Liquid has done it. 2-0. Over the Titans. What a masterful draft coming out from Kuroki, just pinning LGD down one pick at a time. And the last pick, Brewmother, you just saw how, you know, LGD were just like, we have to put DP in a safe lane, we have to put Timber. They didn't flat out lose in the lanes, but overall, the gaming strategy just didn't go their way. They were pressured the whole game. And finally, that Matumba Man split push is what did them 